Hi there, my name is Nino Mihetov. I'm an interventional cardiology fellow at Columbia University Irving Medical Center. And today I'm joined by Dr. Don Abbott from Brown University and Dr. Doug Drachman from Massachusetts General Hospital, both of whom are interventional cardiology program directors and are leading SKY's effort to have interventional cardiology join the match. Today we plan to review a little bit about the efforts of the SKY. And I'll begin with you, Dr. Abbott. And let us know why did SKY convene a task force to address this topic? This is a topic we've actually been interested in for over 10 years. Uh, discussions uh, started quite a while ago, but um, recently it came to the forefront because of the uh, timeline. What we saw as program directors is the uh, ERAS match would open in December and in previous years we would have ample time to re review the qualities of the candidates and convene our faculty and hold interviews around the March or April timeline. And over the past three to four years, that has been rapidly accelerated, partially due to the um, ability to hold interviews remotely during COVID and because of the competitiveness of interventional cardiology. We found in this last match cycle that uh, many programs were holding um, interviews the day uh, after ERAS opened, the week after ERAS opened, moving that initial time frame back several months, and um, you know this is a disadvantage to the the applicants and the programs for really getting a good sense of the applicant pool, and uh, that's one of the main drivers of wanting to have a more uh, standardized timeline. Dr. Drachman, do you have anything to add? Yeah, thanks. I think that um, really over the past year, especially, we felt that the process was so accelerated that it just created an incredibly high pressure situation, high stakes, high pressure for the candidates, really. I think many of them reported that they were offered kind of an exploding offer, uh, accept the position in our program within the next 24 hours, or we have to move down the list. And it created really an untenable situation that we think was not appropriately supportive to the candidate's prerogative to find the best place for them, the best match, the best potentially family situation for where they wanted to look and live for the next year. And it really created a lot of challenges to kind of match fellows with their desired career trajectory. We think it's really just unfair to the candidate and undesirable also to the fellowship programs because we were all forced to escalate our processes to try to answer to fellows who might say, I'd like to look at your program, but I've got another offer. I've got a day to resolve this. What can you do for me? So I think it really created a lot of tension on all sides of this equation. And most importantly, though, I think it disenfranchised the applicants to have the chance to see what was best for them. We also know from other specialty match programs that have moved later in the academic cycle that candidates have had more time for professional development and exploring career cho choices with the later um, match date. Also, maybe to, to, to Dr. Jackman, what does Sky hope to achieve by bringing interventional cardiology into the match? I think that the match really levels the playing field and it depressurizes the situation. Our hope is just to make this all really fair, regulated, and appropriate in something that respects the dignity of every candidate and every program that participates. By taking the time pressure out of this, it allows, first of all, candidates potentially to have another six months to explore the career path that they might want to uh, pursue to see if intervention is right for them. It allows the candidate to become more developed and to understand what their career aspirations are that I think can really be appreciated by the um, programs that hope to train them and to recognize the best potential fit but it really creates a sense of fairness. It allows everybody to look around, take stock of what's going on and make the most informed and best decision for themselves. I think finally, the match as it is for all other programs that are regulated within the match, it creates a sense of an agreement. You know, the program commits to fellows, fellows commit to the program, and this ultimately creates a solid, fair, regulated, and transparent process, I think, that is really, really helpful and something that's different, I think, than the pressure that we're all feeling now today. And Dr. Abbott, what do you see advantages in, to interventional cardiology joining the match? I think uh, Doug touched on a lot of the important points. 
And I think we have to move from a program focus to a trainee focused environment. Um, it, it's really important if you want to um, have your program be uh, well respected and represented that you are able to provide the same um, timeline and set a reasonable standardized timeline as other programs. So this way, some of the smaller programs or less known programs that are competing with some of the bigger names, they have time. They have time to identify the appropriate candidates to interview and showcase their institution and what they have to offer to candidates. I think in the past, there's such a big scramble that uh, as Doug said, it's a disservice to both the program and the fellow. By having this additional time, being able to go through a standardized process you can also really evaluate how to have more diversity, equity, and inclusion in your program. You can look at the resources for standardized interviewing in terms of, you know, how do we best interview fellows? How do we best determine how qualified they are? You know, there's Sky can certainly help with that. Uh, you know, this is our interventional home. Sky is behind this mission. So this whole effort is going to do not only standardize time, but standardize how we how we go through this process. Like, what is the best way to determine if somebody is going to be a competent interventional fellow? What are some of the resources your program can get for interviewing using appropriate questions and really treating everyone fairly? So I see this as a complete win-win situation. So whether you're a program with one fellow or six fellows, you will get more out of this match process than the effort it will take to participate. And that's really what we wanna emphasize. We're not trying to burden programs or um, you know, put them in a position where they feel like they're at a disadvantage. It's the opposite. Going through this process is going to advantage programs, big and small, urban and, and you know, more remote because they have time to select the appropriate applicants and have the resources we can build to make this a better process for everybody. All incredibly important points. So thank you both for joining us. If someone wanted to learn more about this effort, where should they go? Well, first visit sky.org slash match for more information. And then also uh, look in your email. We're gonna be um, sending out summaries, uh, key points, um, uh, questions and answers. And then we're going to be sending a survey and looking for feedback from program directors so we can make this an optimal effort and get it right the first time. And, you know, our hope is that we can get this instituted, um, you know, very soon on a rapid timeline so that the 2024 class will be the first class to officially go through a match. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining, and we'll be in touch.